Hello everybody, this is Professor Kyung Hee Pyeon. I am going to lecture on introduction of Buddhism because Buddhism is a new religion and new philosophical ideas so that I want to give you a little bit of overview. But my overview is short, so I want you to take time uh, and read through. Uh, this is a very effective introduction, but I also believe in your own uh, learning style. Um, some people can learn well by listening to my lecture, but some people want to take a note. And also I want you to put at all kinds of learning styles. We have to prepare uh, for a different and new environment. Anyhow, um, so in this video, I am going to talk about the uh, overview of Buddhism uh, and then uh, Three Kingdoms and Six Dynasties briefly. And then I'm going to talk about Tang Dynasty and then in the subsequent uh, lecture, I am going to talk about uh, Song and Wien Dynasty. So let me see. So let me go find my Buddhism slide. There are 14 slides. Um, and then uh, the first one is uh, how uh, China became a Buddhist uh, follower. Uh, and then uh, I will going to talk a little bit uh, in depth, okay? So quickly, Buddhism was already introduced in Han Dynasty at some point in the first uh, century BCE, you know, between the BCE and CE, uh, but then uh, became really important in the Tang Dynasty. The climax of Buddhist art with imperial patronage would coincide with emperors in Tang Dynasty. So uh, this is the map of five dynasties. That is not the five dynasties. This is like a one of uh, six dynasties uh, that we are going to see in a moment. I'm collecting myself, it's one of the six dynasties. So in the beginning of six dynasties, there will be a large power of Northern Wei and then another power in Diang. So Liang along Yangtze River is by Han people. And then Northern Wei, it is by a, uh, a foreign tribe called Tuoba. Let me get my pen. So it's by Tuoba. Um, so uh, they ruled the Northern uh, area. So all the Han people said, especially ruling class and aristocratic people, they said, well, we cannot live with the Toba people are moving to the south, they moved. So here, um, the Buddhist site is uh, this Winka, very important, and then Gongxian and Songshan, um, and then uh, Maiji Shan, like these type of Buddhist sites. But who made this? Uh, Northern Wei people. So uh, alien rulers, they came to China and they also converted to Buddhism because it was a great idea to have a unity in belief with Han population. Uh, and people in uh, the Yang people, they became also Buddhist as well, but they had been Buddhist previously during the Three Kingdoms period. Anyhow, uh, so that's the map showing major Buddhist uh, sites. And in Buddhism, you have uh, two main divisions. One is called the Mahayana and the other is called the Theravada. Uh, and Theravada Buddhism, uh, is, uh, uh, active in South Asia and Southeast Asia. And Mahayana Buddhism is the one that we are going to talk about uh, in East Asia, the mainly China, Korea, and Japan. The, the birthplace of Buddhism is somewhere here. You see Bodhgaya Gaya and Sarnath, so that's the birthplace where Shakyamuni um, started uh, this religious movement. But then it spread through to this area called Gandhara. Uh, this is the name, Gandhara. Currently, Gandhara is part of Pakistan in the modern country. Anyhow, this is going to spread along the Silk Road and the kind of Buddhist text and Buddhist art that Chinese, Korean, and Japanese are going to uh, all respect um, is the Gandhara style Buddhist art. So that's important, I want you to remember. But you can take a moment and read more about it. Why they didn't go directly to here? This is Himalaya mountains. You cannot really cross over. So that's why they followed the river and 
flat land. So this is the only way possible. So they have to circumvent like this. Why they cannot go like this? Again, these are Himalaya mountains. So if you get over the Himalaya mountains, what do you get? Desert. This is called Taklamakan Desert. So again, you cannot cross the desert. Uh, so after Himalaya mountains, you have like Unlun Shan, like another mountainous area, and then it leads to the desert. So people travel along that oasis towns along the desert. What is the fundamental principle of Buddhism? I will uh, be he who walks before all laws that have a virtue uh, as their root. Everything that we see is nothing but illusion. This is important. Sort of, um, they are denying the reality, right? If we can detach ourselves from everything, then we will all be to that. So your detachment is important. So attachment is your desire, and it's something that you should avoid. Um, and then detachment is or like uh, uh, enlightenment. So if you get detached from everything, that will lead to your major enlightening moment. It's called enlightenment. This is like an ideal uh, condition that uh, all the Buddhists want to arrive. So enlightenment. If you in which enlightenment, meaning you are almost Buddhas. So in Buddhism, some people decided to be a Buddha, uh, but then they realized that they don't want to come completely severed ties with this world, even though it is nothing but illusion. Um, so they instead want to be Bodhisattva. Um, I don't know whether it will appear in next uh, slide, but Bodhisattva. That's a very important condition. So they are lay people. Uh, they are still living in this world, but they want to preach and help others to achieve enlightenment. So I always consider myself a little bit of a Bodhisattva <laughs> because I am giving you a lecture on Buddhism every single semester. Uh, so this is a statue of um, Shakyamuni or the first teacher as a baby. So when he was born, he said, in this world, I'm the only one. You know, you have to realize that I am the only one. So I'll be he who walks before all laws that have a virtue as their root. You have to follow me, kind of thing. Um, so there is a little bit of difference between Theravada and Mahayana. So I want you to read this if you want to know more about it. But Mahayana Buddhism, basically what is very important is you have to help others to achieve Buddhahood. So here, the idea of patronage right, comes in. In uh, Theravada Buddhism, it's more like a, your individual um, enlightenment and salvation. but in Mahayana Buddhism, they really emphasize the idea of a bodhisattva. You have to uh, be giving and sharing. So you have to share what you know already, not just you getting uh, enlightenment. So here, bodhisattvas. And then another difference is Mahayana Buddhism allows multiple Buddhas and multiple, how do you call it, multiple bodhisattvas. So in a way, it uh, increases the lay people's opportunity to be Buddhas or Bodhisattvas, because there is now no single Buddha, right? Um, and then iconography. So what do they create as a visual art? Well, they always venerate Buddha's own body that you are going to see in a short, short moment. And this type of a big tower is always called stupa. Stupa is like a tower. But stupa and pagoda is the same thing. So in Southeast Asia or South Asian context, you call this kind of monument as a stupa. But uh, in East Asian context, they are called the pagoda. They look a little bit more like a watchtower. Or uh, they have this idea of cosmology. So if you go to Mahayana cosmology, you will have multiple Buddhas surrounded by other numerous Buddhas and then Bodhisattvas. Um, and other deities, uh, and you are going to see uh, more people. But this is that, you know, in Angkor Wat, uh, Cambodia, there are many, many um, stupas. Uh, and if you see it from the above, you have this kind of concentric wings. You have a sky single in the middle, 
and then you have multiple steps, and then it for cardinal directions. And this is briefly about the relationship of Gandhara uh, Buddhist art with East Asia. So here, Gandhara Buddhist art, they resemble with Hellenistic art. Do you know the word Hellenistic art? Look at these both uh, head uh, types, Hellenistic, Hellenistic. Do you see a little bit of similarity? Like, uh, you know, eyes uh, sort of sunk to the in, and then eyebrows and forehead area, like a slightly protruding or popping out, right? Like a well delineated nose, high nose, and then most importantly, this kind of curly hair. Um, so in Gandhara region, uh, there was a great uh, interchange uh, between a Indian artists along with Hellenistic artisans because the area, the Gandhara, was partially occupied by Alexander the Great and his uh, military groups uh, in the third century, uh, third to fourth century BCE. Uh, so they had this uh, root of classical uh, art. So anyhow, somehow they got a little bit of a resemblance relationship between uh, the Near East, like West Asia, and uh, Asia, so that eventually it traveled along the Silk Road. This is one monument called uh, Colossal Buddha in Pamian. You want to read more about it because it doesn't exist anymore because it was detonated uh, by Taliban rulers in 2001. Uh, in my own class, Art of the Silk Road, we discuss this um, uh, events in a really uh, in great detail. So it doesn't exist anymore, even though you go to Afghanistan. 